Hey everybody, welcome to this afternoon's rundown here on Caribbean Weather Dude YouTube channel. I'm Joey Only up in Wells, 3,953 feet above sea level, yeah, 53 degrees north as well here in British Columbia. That's right. So meteorologist Mark has a look, a little rundown today on his website on the summer of 2025. Let's have a look at it and discuss it today. Okay, let's go. There it is. This is bad news. My God. Falling out right now. Anything could happen. Get on. Wow. I'll watch the video later. They dry them up in this. Hey everybody, hit like, share, and subscribe. And uh, hey, meteorologist Mark Ingalls, you can find him at www ingleswx.com he will be here on thursday night at 6 30 p.m live on this channel right here p.m uh 6 30 p.m pacific standard time let me remind you as i'm here in the uh, british columbia and he's going to be interviewing pasco washington tv meteorologist mike mccabe going to be a really really great episode and of course we'll have our regulars with us as usual frankie mcdonald the world's famous weatherman brandon hauk uh brooks uh, bandits and uh uh, weather radio man there in Brooks, Alberta. Uh, we got a full cast of uh, people, so uh, check that out. But anyways, let's talk about meteorologist Mark's article today. We can ask him about it when we're on the show this week as well. Seen here in EnglesWX.com. Looking ahead to summer 2025 in North America. Uh, also, he's got a new one. Monday earthquake shakes Vancouver, Seattle. Are earthquakes striking more than usual? Question mark. He's got a, a couple things like that. Strong thunderstorms possible. So lots of uh, good articles always on his blog right now. And uh, Mark you know, was an American, is an American, I suppose. He's living in uh, BC now. And this, uh, almost a year ago, Mark sent me a message and he said, hey, I'm thinking about applying for this uh, meteorology job there in Canada, in British Columbia. What do you think? I said, get out while you can, you know. So, uh, of course, uh, a lot of us up here, I know a lot of our American friends watching us here in the channel. I've been pretty hard on the situation between us and America lately. But uh, let me remind you that ultimately, uh, us working people, we're all in this together on both sides of the border. We're the ones that are going to suffer from all the turmoil going on in the world right now right so uh uh, we are not each other's enemies, that's uh, for sure. We're there for you, we hear you, we see your struggles right now. Okay, anyways, uh, meteorologist Mark is saying uh, the northern he hemisphere is a few days into meteorological spring and as temperatures gradually warm, attention is shifting toward what conditions will be like in the summer. A few signals are coming into view which may help give an early look at what to expect. Note that with all, with all the long-range forecasts, we are considering things generally over the course of the entire city. Uh, season. It's not possible to pick up on when or where specific events such as heat waves, wildfires, severe thunderstorm outbreaks, and things like that will occur this far in advance. If you uh, are out there buying, I'll just say on my own, uh, the uh, Farmer's Almanac and thinking that uh, those uh, detailed forecasts months in ahead can have any chance of prediction, it's it's really just a roll of the dice. They, uh, they have no science behind that. Okay. Um, Rather, these forecasts consider how the season as a whole will compare to climatological norms, you know, what to sort of expect in a general sense. So La Nina is on its way out. Over the past several weeks, the eastern third of the equatorial Pacific has warmed to the point where the negative anomaly has disappeared. Temperatures in the middle third of the equatorial Pacific remain below average. After a late start and a relatively weak peak, La Nina forecast revised to show it ending during spring or perhaps early summer in 2025. And so neutral conditions were observed during the fall, which produced an unusually active Pacific Northwest storm season. Such as more or less normal during ENSO neutral conditions. And here just have a look at the map there showing sea surface anomalies on March 10th. Uh, more or less giving us that peak that uh, uh, it's looking more and more like at the equatorial region. We're starting to see uh, warm water welling up there. And so, you know, warmer than, uh, uh, than average. Okay. And so neutral conditions are favored this summer. But it appears the larger impact will be sea surface temperatures elsewhere in the Pacific Ocean. The North Pacific is significantly influential in North America because, in general, systems move from the Pacific eastward across the continent and into the Atlantic. What we're looking at as temperatures warm is a large area of above average ocean temperatures between Hawaii and Alaska with below average temperatures from Baja to the southeast of Hawaii. 
This pattern is very similar to 2022 and modeling suggests that it will continue through the summer months. Now, this is very interesting because 2022 was a pretty dead fire season here in British Columbia, if you do not uh, recall. Uh, I had uh, four or five fires we got sent to, but I know a lot of contract crews didn't get to one fire whatsoever. So we'll see how much... Uh, in the end, it plays out like 2022. I still think we're a little ways out, so we're just kind of, uh, you know, stabbing in the dark here right now. But we're we're dialing in as the months go, getting closer and closer to an understanding of what uh, the summer is probably going to be like. While temperatures have moderated slightly from the all-time record set in 2024, the global average of 21.03 which is 69.85 degrees Fahrenheit on March 10th is well above the climatological norm of 20.52 for that date. Half a degree Celsius may not seem like a big difference, but note that within a normal year, the global average sea surface temperature varies by 0.3 to 0.4 degrees Celsius, so not by very much. So temperature anomalies for summer 2022. It's reasonable to look at 2022 as a proxy for this summer as sea surface temperatures in the North Pacific look similar to that year. Ob observations in summer 2022 showed nearly all of North America under average temperatures. Now, the thing is, um, yeah, we may have the anomaly may look similar from 2022 to 2025. But what I think is the wild card is going to be is how much warmer is the actual ocean. And we know it's like it's much warmer already now than it was in 2022. And it's it's a big matter of discussion in the scientific community. Like, whoa, it's way warmer than we expected it to be. Okay. Nunavut, Texas, the High Plains, California, Oregon had the strongest values above average that year. I expect much of North America will again be hot compared to average. That said, the exact location of where heat manifests itself may vary. The southwest monsoon was quite active in 2022 with a large area from El Paso toward Tonopah seeing much above average precipitation. The efficiency of the monsoon was driven by great basin heat that creates low pressure and pulls moisture from the Mexican Pacific coast northward into the south de uh, desert southwest. In August, heavy monsoon rainfall caused flash flooding in Death Valley National Park. This event caused a brief flows that blocked roads and stranded over a thousand people in the park. Some of the monsoon moisture made it to the inland northwest for above average precipitation from the central Oregon to the Idaho panhandle. Here's Mark's opinion on the Atlantic hurricane season. Atlantic hurricane season runs from June 1st to November 30th, with the most active period being August through October. The number of tropical storms and hurricanes that form in the Atlantic is determined by the number of factors, including sea surface temperatures, and so, and the quarterly uh, quantity of tropical waves entering from Atlantic to Africa. Uh, okay, and so neutral conditions are a signal that the Atlantic hurricane season will not be extremely above average. In addition, while the Atlantic remains well above Above sea surface temperatures, they are not as extreme as they were in 2024. Above average temperatures can lead to explosive hurricane growth, which was seen in a few storms in 2024. The number of storms didn't reach what was possible because tropical waves came off Africa further north. Rather than running in the tropical region through countries like Nigeria and Guinea, tropical waves track further north, possibly pulled by hot conditions along the Mediterranean. The result was that these waves emerged into cooler but still above average waters in the Atlantic and struggled to develop into tropical cyclones. Modeling and data from 2022 suggest this year's wave track will be closer to the normal region, but ENSO and relatively cooler water at the summer, uh, this summer makes it so the risk of explosive growth is less extreme. Still, a near average season produces uh, around seven hurricanes, and regardless of whether or not hurricane season is above average, if your home gets destroyed by a hurricane, it's a bad season for you. Okay, interesting. 2022 hurricane season was quite calm in the Gulf of Mexico. I don't know what sort of predictive values this offers for 2025, but readers should note that temperatures in the Gulf were somewhat closer to average that year than they are today. Pacific Northwest wildfires, this section's called. Pacific Northwest wildfires, this section's called. Oregon and southern Idaho exhibit fairly healthy snowpack right now as we progress through March, but the deep snowpack that was hoped for this winter in Washington and British Columbia has not materialized. This was largely the result of La Nina being later and weaker than forecast. BC snowpack was recorded at 73% above average on March 1st with recent uh, U.S. values ranging from 72% in the Puget Sound drainage to 124% in Middle Snake drainage. Conditions improved the further south one goes, actually. 
Snowpack got a late start despite significant precipitation in November and December. The storm track was such that many storms came in from the southwest, bringing warmer air up from the subtropical Pacific to keep snow levels very high. Long dry stretches in January and February didn't help the situation. Now, a fairly wet and uh, mild spring is forecast for much of the Pacific Northwest. This is problematic for summer wildfires because wet and mild conditions allow for significant fuel growth. Once the region begins to dry in June, the newly grown bush will die off and be easy to light on fire. Uh, That is uh, certainly for the drier belts of BC especially. Available data points this summer bringing above average temperatures to Washington, Oregon, Idaho, and BC. Heat will speed up the desiccation of spring growth, and by midsummer, fuel load is probably going to be near critical conditions. The vast majority of wildfires in the contiguous United States are started by people through dry lightning, uh, though dry lightning does play a role in the Northwest, including British Columbia. In fact, it was uh, uh, it's been more and more than the overall cause of wildfires in BC. It's been lightning outbreaks, and especially because. Uh, generally, these lightning outbreaks come, they light up many fires at once, and they challenge the ability to respond to all of them at a time. So you knock down the ones that are closest to towns, but the next thing you know, those ones further out have time to grow. And that's exactly what happened here in Wells, for example, right? Uh, with pretty quiet fire season, and all of a sudden there's fires everywhere. What do you do? So there is that. Um, now... This has been true, I think, historically, especially what Mark's saying here on his graph, the possible peak locations for dry thunderstorms. Um, He's saying June 2025 in the uh, central parts of Washington and maybe for July, if you go a little bit further out and then you come into BC, we're talking August. Um, I'm going to disagree a little bit on that. I think this is typical of what we saw in the, um, the, the past, like, but I think when 2017 started, People were really taken aback by it. That was on July 9th, 2017. And, you know, dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens of fires were lit in one afternoon. And hundreds of fires were lit in one afternoon as a line of thunderstorms came through, a dry line of thunderstorms. And we've seen things like that in July last year. We've seen things like that in 2021. So this is becoming a pattern now in BC, I think, through climate change that we're seeing more active thunderstorm seasons and we're seeing them earlier and we're seeing them triggered uh, sometimes without the precipitation to fall with them. So, uh, and especially what we've seen, I've seen noticed personally in my time in BC watching uh, weather is that there is now a lot of lightning that's been kicking off every year in the northeast sections of the province, areas that used to be a lot quieter. We're talking the Peace up through Fort Nelson, the North Rockies, Mackenzie areas like that, seeing a lot more lightning activity the last bunch of years. So uh, that's my thoughts on those areas. Although the snowpack in northern BC is uh, better than it is in South and Central BC. So at least there's some padding for them there. And, you know, of course, we have the weather patterns. They may, if they reflect 2022, we may see a lot of, uh, even if we see thunderstorms in July, we may see more rain-heavy ones. And I think 2022 was really uh, much that way. I think 2022 played out the way this graph looks from my own memory and from my uh, putting forecasts on the channel here at the time, sure, but I'll, most uh, specifically on Interior Weather and Wilderness Watchers, the group I want on Facebook that's got 39,600 people on it. Okay, predicting exact wildfires is outside the scope of this article, but general trends suggest dry lightning threat may be strongest in arid regions around the Columbia Basin in June, the Blue Mountains, northern Idaho. Uh, how about the east slopes of Cascades and Okanagan, Okanogan regions in July, BC? Uh, they, they have two different, the American spelling is Okanogan. Uh, and the BC interior for August as well. So if this does follow 2022, I agree with this. Um you know, the jury's out if we follow 2022, but so far the prevailing wisdom is looking favorable for that, right? Uh, so keep that in mind. Like this may, may very well be how it actually does play out. And that would be, I think, a positive to us. We've seen some pretty busy uh, fire seasons, you know, in the last uh, eight years, especially. Of course, uh, the predictability decreases as we look into the future. These are just favored regions based on both model data and previous similar years like 2022. Wildfires can form anywhere at any time in the Pacific Northwest. Uh, conclusions, in fact, we've already had a couple in the Kamloops region and the South, uh, I think Southeast Center's had a couple. So so here are the conclusions. Above average temperatures are favored for much of North America this summer. The Great Lakes regions may be the exception, especially on the Canadian side. And a stronger than usual monsoon could moderate temperatures, some in 
Arizona and New Mexico. For the Pacific Northwest, above average temperatures don't necessarily mean another heat dome on the magnitude of the June 2021 event that could happen. Significant heat waves are possible any summer, and above average summer does bring a greater chance of them. But I don't think that risk is outstandingly high, at least, you know, like, uh, doesn't mean it won't happen. Um, there's been years where the setup would look better, he thinks. Wildfires may be rough in Washington, Oregon, Idaho, and BC. During the meteorological summer months of June, July, and August, this is more likely to be felt in the inland regions. Wildfires can happen through the region at any point in the dry season, but areas west of the Cascades are climatologically more likely to be impacted in September. This is because cooling temperatures in the Canadian and Montana Rockies aid in switching the wind patterns to off- offshore, drawing the western half of the Washington, Oregon to increase fire risk. So... So that's just a little bit of a look at meteorologist Mark's uh, uh, peering into the future. You can always come to the uh, chat here. We'll be on the live stream at 6.30 on Thursday night, Pacific Standard Time, when uh, meteorologist Mark will be here, and we'll be welcoming TV meteorologist Mike McCabe from Pasco, Washington. going to be awesome. I'm totally stoked on this episode. Uh, Totally stoked. We're going to let Mark do the interviewing again because I like it when I can uh, set the show up, set the table, and then just let them uh, bring the meat. That's what I said on the uh, group chat we had there. Okay, that's uh, me for now. We'll be back with you a little bit more later today. Thanks, everyone. Uh, thanks very much, especially to Sean and Paul today. Totally made my day, and Anne the other day. All the people who keep uh, giving the little donation supers, and people who are sharing, liking, and telling people about the channel. You are uh, keeping me alive. Thanks so much. Keeping the dream alive here, everybody. We'll see you next time. Bye now.